Changing the MPLS Label Distribution Protocol Transport Address. Let's begin. Inside of MPLS LDP hellos as they're being sent out, the router ID by default will be sent as the transport address. So for example, if R3 has a loopback address of 3.3.3.3, and it's the highest IP address on any loopback when LDP started, by default that would be the address that was advertised. So now when R2 or R4 are going to establish an LDP session with R3, they're going to do it to that IP address. Now the challenge is, what if this IP address is not reachable? It's not in the routing tables of R2 or R4. One option is to change the default behavior and say instead of advertising the transport address of the router ID, why don't we go ahead and advertise the address that's on each of these interfaces respectively? So by changing the default on R3 and say, hey, dear Mr. Gig 2 slash 0, instead of using the transport address of 3333, advertise it as 10.23.0.3 on this interface and as 10.34.0.4, the actual IP address that's on the interface, as you send those advertisements out to the right, in this case where R4 would hear them. So that way, even if we have an LDP router ID that's not reachable, we can still establish LDP sessions because the transport address can be the actual IP address of the interface who's sending out the hellos. So here's our scenario. I've got a loopback of 3.3.3.3 on R3, and that has not been added to OSPF. So R2 and R4 know nothing about that IP address regarding reachability. In a packet capture of the hellos that R3 is currently sending, and if we take a look at the source address, this is being captured on the 23 network based on the source IP address of the hello message. Inside of this LDP hello, we're advertising that our Router ID is 3333, and most importantly for our session establishment, we're advertising that our transport address is 3333. And if R2 and R4 don't have reachability to that address, they won't become LDP neighbors. So we can verify that right here on R3. We can simply ask R3, do you have any MPLS LDP neighbors? And he says, no, I don't. And that's because they can't reach my transport address. Now we could, I suppose, add that loop back into OSPF and that would be one solution. But what I want to show you in this video is how we can manipulate and change that transport address. We could also verify what the current settings are with a show MPLS LDP discovery detail command. And that confirms exactly what the packet capture showed us as well. There's the ID for the router and there's the transport address that we're currently advertising. It also says here that we see the hello messages from R2 and R4, but there's no way they're ever gonna be able to connect with us because they can't reach our transport address. So to fix this, we're simply gonna go into each of the interfaces, gig 20 and gig 30, and we're gonna ask the router, hey, you know the IP address you've got on this interface? I'd like to make that the transport address that you're advertising when you send hello messages out this interface. So we'll do that for gig 2 slash 0 and gig 3 slash 0. Now once that's done, we can use the quick up arrow key a couple of times to show MPLS discovery detail, and you'll notice now we have advertisements. The hello messages are now containing as a transport address 10.230.3 on gig 2 slash 0, which is perfect because R2 has reachability to that. And on gig 3 slash 0, we're advertising a transport address of 10.34.0.3, which happen to be the IP addresses assigned to those respective interfaces. Now I've paused the screen here so I could write on it, but in the background you'll notice we also have our neighborships which have now come up because R2 and R4 both have reachability to the transport address that they saw in the hello messages. I had a lot of fun. I'm glad you joined me for this video. For more great training on MPLS, hey, come and check us out over at CBT Nuggets. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.